This is going to be Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to look at the heart of a religious man. You know, this chapter is about Adam and Eve having Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel because he's jealous and he's very, very religious. And we're going to look at the heart of a religious man. So Genesis 4 and verse 1. It says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And you're going to see that Abel is a type of the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ calls himself the good shepherd in John chapter 10 and verse 11. And while he's a type of the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, Cain is a type of the Christ-rejecting Jew and even the Antichrist in some ways. But number one, what is in the heart of a religious man? Self-righteousness. In Genesis 4 and verse 3, it says, And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Notice that Cain, the bad brother, brings an offering first. He is actually more religious than Abel is. Uh, Cain pictures a self-righteous man trying to earn God's favor through works. And he doesn't bring a blood offering. Instead, he brings the fruit of the ground. And there's that saying, you can't get blood out of a turnip. And if I, I came to God any other way, then through the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood, then I would never make it to heaven. Uh, Cain should have brought a blood offering. But he pictures the self-righteous man trying to get to heaven without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's ignorant of God's righteousness, goes about to establish his own righteousness as people do when they try to make it to heaven by their own works. And Paul is clear in the Pauline epistles that we're not saved by the works of our own righteousness. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And just these basic verses that show us that works don't play a part in our salvation, so basic that you could probably quote what I just said without even looking at the verses. I mean, these are very common verses. Anybody that's read the Bible knows these verses by heart. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We get redemption through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, not by our own works. And Genesis 4, 4 says, And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. So he brought more than one, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So the Lord has respect not for Cain's offering, but actually for a blood sacrifice. And Romans 5, 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We can't get justified by our own works. Uh, Genesis 4, 5, But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And if you go against a self-righteous religious person what is the usual reaction they get angry and they are so self-righteous that they can't take correction or a rebuke or advice from anyone because they think they know it all uh, proverbs fifteen five says a fool despiseth his father's instruction but he that regardeth reproof is prudent uh, notice that self-righteous people they're more concerned about defending themselves and defending their beliefs of their own cult or denomination more than they are about actually doing what God says. They care more about the tradition of men and the commandments of men than the commandments of God. And they won't take reproof or correction from anyone 
but themselves are the people in their own cult. But God shed animals' blood for Adam and Eve to clothe them in the previous chapter, and they no doubt would have had passed this information on to Cain and Abel. So Cain was probably well aware that God is looking for a blood sacrifice. It, it isn't only the thought that counts. Cain may have thought about doing it first, but you have to do it God's way. Now Genesis 4, 6, it says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? Uh, his countenance is fallen because he envies Abel. What's in the heart of a religious man? Envy. Uh, he is overcome with jealousy. He may be even under conviction when he sees Abel doing what God says. And I've had people in my life who are mad at me for carrying a Bible. I've had people in my life who are mad at me for having a Bible verse bumper sticker on my car. I've had people in my life who are mad at me because I didn't like worldly music that they listened to. And these weren't the average lost men and women who were mad. These were religious people who claimed to be Christians who were mad. Uh, they claim they're going to heaven by their works, and when they see someone doing a work they aren't doing, it puts them under conviction, and their first reaction is to get mad at that person. It makes them hate me. Uh, Genesis 4, 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. A sin is like something at your doorstep that pops up to get you when you come out. You have to be sober, be vigilant. Ever since Adam fell in the garden, he passed on that sin nature to all of us. And we have to stay in the book. We have to stay in fellowship with God because sin is right around the corner. The devil's got something right around the corner to trap each and every one of us. But what else is in the heart of a religious man? Murder. Many times I hear people say uh, Christianity or the Bible is the main cause for all the killing that's went on. And being a Christian isn't the main cause for the killing that's went on. Religion is. Uh, because they're so full of hate and murder. Religious people are. Genesis 4, eight, it says, And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. So the first religious man is a murderer. Abel is a type of Jesus Christ, as I said before. Acts 2.23, referring to Jesus Christ, says this. It says, By wicked hands was crucified and slain. The Lord Jesus Christ was crucified by wicked hands. And Abel is the first person uh, to be killed with someone by wicked hands. Uh, Cain is the first person with hands that shed innocent blood. And hands that shed innocent blood is something the Lord hates, according to Proverbs sixteen eighteen. So the field that the boys were in, when Cain killed Abel, that pictures the world. Abel pictures Jesus Christ, and Cain pictures the self-righteous Pharisee who wanted Jesus Christ to be dead. Uh, Genesis 4, 9, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? If the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, then Cain doesn't look too wise here. Look, what, look how he's talking to God. He says, Am I my brother's keeper? Uh, he has no respect for God deep down. Genesis 4.10, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. There is something about blood. Uh, Leviticus 17.11 says, The life of the flesh is in the blood. Abel's blood speaks to God from the ground. If you have ever seen any crime investigation, then you know how they can find drops of blood in someone's trunk or in someone's house on their carpet. And that alone can place the owner of the car or the house where the blood is. That can place them as the murderer. The blood cries from the ground wherever it's laying. A blood is a powerful thing. 
people are obsessed with blood. Uh, what do people want to watch? Bloody movies. What do people want to play? Bloody games on the video game system. Uh, people love to shed innocent blood. They kill babies, suck their blood out. And in Genesis 14, the voice of Abel's blood cried unto God from the ground. Blood is a powerful thing. The blood of Jesus is what washes away every person that comes to him as a guilty sinner. That's God's blood. If man's blood is as powerful as it is, it, it is, is, and it's so amazing, imagine how amazing God's blood is that can wash away everyone's sin. Now Genesis 4.11, it says, And thou art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. So Cain was caught red-handed with his hands that shed innocent blood. He is lucky that capital punishment hadn't been instituted yet. And instead of shedding the blood of an animal, Cain sheds the blood of his innocent brother. And the Bible says that Cain was of that wicked one in 1 John 3.12. So I guess you could consider this the first sacrifice to the devil. Uh, he refused to give God a blood sacrifice. And God doesn't want him sacrificing his brother. But he shed the blood of Cain. So who would he be sacrificing him to? Uh, he did exactly what the devil wanted. Genesis 4.12 When thou tillest the ground, this is God talking to Cain, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So Cain, as I said before, is a type of the Christ-rejecting Jew. And he's told that when he tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Today, you don't see many Jewish farmers in, in America. You don't see them. And God uses this as a judgment, as he will in the millennium. Uh, if the kings of the earth don't worship Jesus Christ, then he won't let them have rain for their crops to grow. Zechariah fourteen seventeen says, And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth into Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So God can use this type of thing to as a judgment on people. And that's what he does to Cain. And that's why you don't see many Jewish farmers as Cain is a type of the Christ-rejecting Jew. But what else is in the heart of a religious man? Self-pity. Uh, Genesis four thirteen and 14 says, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. Uh, the self-righteous religious man doesn't believe he deserves his punishments. He said this punishment is greater than I can bear. Uh, but he deserved worse. He thinks God is unjust for this type of punishment. Uh, God could have just put him in hell right then. God could have just killed him right then. Uh, if you talk to a religious person, they don't think that they deserve the bad things that are happening to them because they're so self-righteous. They think that God is unjust for letting bad things happen to them. But the heart of someone who's right with God says, I deserved any bad thing that's happening to me. Every time I got sick, every time I got in a wreck, Every time I was hurt, physically or mentally, I deserved it. And I deserve any bad thing that comes my way. I have sinned and come short of the glory of God even after I was saved. I deserve to be in hell. I've done things since I've been saved that I need to be sent to hell for. The cor correct response to God's judgment is to say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. When David sinned with Bathsheba, he knew he deserved the punishment that came afterwards. And that's why he is a man after God's own heart. Uh, Genesis 4.14 says, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and, it, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Uh, 
Cain would be like a pedophile in prison. Uh, everyone would be trying to knock him out and kill him. But Cain, who is full of self-pity, is the type of person who says, everyone is out to get me. He's paranoid. He thinks everyone's out to get him because he thinks he's so important. But capital punishment, as I said, hasn't come about yet. So Cain doesn't die. And the Lord puts a mark upon Cain so that he doesn't get killed. And you see this through the Bible and other places where God puts a seal in the foreheads of the 144,000. So they aren't killed in the book of Revelation. And then in Ezekiel uh, 9.4, God has a protective mark put on the foreheads of those who sigh and cry for the abominations going on. Uh, Genesis 4.15 says, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whatsoever, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. If you're born again, then God has a mark on you. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, God has mercy on us. God has mercy on us just like he did Cain. We deserved hell, but God saved us and washed us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And while Cain is such a wicked person, and God set a mark up on him, lest any finding him should kill him, how much more a born-again believer in the body of Christ that stood into the day of redemption, how much more can he protect you? And will he protect you? But next we see that the self-righteous man is a kingdom builder. Self-righteous people are more concerned about defending their beliefs than they are another person's soul. They are more concerned about building their own kingdom here on earth. Uh, Cain is the first city builder. And I imagine he would love Sin City or Salem, Massachusetts or any wicked place like that. But Genesis 4, 16 and 17 says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelled in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And Cain's wife would be his sister or his niece. And it doesn't become wrong to marry your sister until Moses gives the law, so... He he either marries his sister or his niece, and that's how Cain gets his wife. And also, since Cain is one of the first people on this earth, things were different back then to where deformities and things like that didn't happen when you married someone so close to Cain. So people are always saying, you know, where did Cain get his wife and all this stuff? Because they want to disprove the Bible many times or the creation. But that's where he got his wife. It was either his sister or his niece. And who much? Who knows how much time has already passed by the, at this point. So there could have been plenty of, of sisters, plenty of his sisters born and of age for him to marry. Uh, Genesis 4.18 says, And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad beget Mahegiel, and Mahegiel beget Methusiel, and Methusiel beget Lamech. And remember, this isn't the same Enoch that walks with God. This is the Enoch from Cain's line. Uh, Genesis 4.19 says, And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. So the first polygamist comes from Cain's line. And Lamech isn't the same Lamech as the one in Genesis 5.25. Remember that in the Bible, there can be more than one person with the same name just like today. You know, you know multiple people with a certain name, and that's how it is in the Bible. Uh, Genesis 4.20 says, And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. So this could be the first cowboys and Indians, as such as dwell in tents, and as such as have cattle. Uh, Genesis 4.21, And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. The first mention of instruments, and it is in the family line of someone who is of that wicked one. And when man gets a hold of music, he messes it up. Uh, kingdom builders will many times have an overemphasis on music. The mega churches who are all about packing the pews and building a big non denominational kingdom, they have corrupt music. Look up Elevation Church 
or Andy Stanley's church. Uh, they play secular music by wicked artists who promote fornication and drugs and alcohol. And then you have the Church of Christ cult who has the opposite extreme view on music. They don't allow any stringed instruments. And it seems the self-righteous kingdom builders can't get a balanced view on music. And I would imagine the music from Cain's line was fleshy music. Genesis 4.22 says, And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. So Cain's name means iron spear. The word iron is associated with negative things throughout the whole Bible. The image in Daniel 2 has legs of iron. Behemoth in the book of Job has iron legs. Goliath Spears' head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Uh, the wicked king of Bashan named Og that you read about in the book of Deuteronomy had a bedstead of iron. Uh, Numbers 35.16 talks about a murderer striking someone with an instrument of iron. So iron in the Bible seems to be connected with bloody men. Cain was a bloody man. He had hands that shed innocent blood. And Tubal Cain was an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. The self-righteous kingdom builder is all about what he does with his own hands. The false gods in the Bible are works of men's hands. Uh, don't ever let anyone uh, make you feel important because of the work you're doing for God. Watch out for flattering lips. Uh, don't get so puffed up in all the work that you're doing. That's what the what that's what's in the heart of the self righteous religious man. Don't let your work become your God. Uh, the kingdom builder does both of these things. He thinks he's good because of his work, and his work becomes his God. Uh, Genesis four twenty three through twenty six says, and Lamech said unto his wives Ada and Zillah. Hear my voices, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So Lamech has slain a man in self-defense, and since he killed him in self-defense, he believes he should be protected even more than Cain. Since Cain murdered Abel for no reason, and I don't believe it says why Lamech killed someone, but... What is a common thing among a self-righteous religious crowd? Uh, strife, divisions, fighting, people going at each other's throats. Uh, so I believe Lamech got in a fight with someone, killed him by self-defense. And he believes that he deserves more protection than Cain did. Since Cain killed Abel, not even in self-defense, just straight up murder. And when men set themselves up in pride, they have a hard time being around other people. That's the self-righteous religious man. He can't be around other people. He thinks he's better than everybody. So maybe what happened here is Lamech, probably a self-righteous person, got in a fight with someone because he can't get along with other people. But that's just speculation. Maybe Lamech was a big mouth Pharisee like Cain, and he got into scuffles with people over things and ended up killing someone in self-defense. Now, verse 25, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So something I thought about is how Adam and Eve continued to stay together through tragedy. Look at all the tragedy they had already been through up to this point. You think you have a bad marriage or you've went through some stuff in your marriage. But at this point, in Adam and Eve's marriage, they had been kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They lost their glorified bodies. Adam sweats to get his food. Uh, has to go through pain and fatigue to get his food. Eve has to have painful childbirth. They lost their son, Abel, because their other son murdered him. Yet, the verse said in verse 25, Adam 
knew his wife again and she bare a son. Tragedy and hard times shouldn't cause you to split ways with your wife. Look at all they've already been through. Now verse 26, And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So men began to call upon the name of the Lord after a son was born. Something that really amped up my prayer life was having a kid. And I believe you should have children if you can. It helped me get closer to God. And that will help you call on the name of the Lord if you're having trouble praying. But this has been Genesis chapter 4. And it's been a look at the heart of a self-righteous man.